Good afternoon, this is Sean Golden with Golden and Golding, here to discuss a common question we receive, which is how difficult or hard is it for the U.S. government to prove someone acted willful when it comes to foreign account FBAR FACA violations, right? If, the, if they can't prove it, then there's really nothing to be afraid of. Unfortunately, uh, courts make it relatively uh, easier for the government to, to show willfulness. So let's kind of go through the basics here. FBAR, Foreign Bank and Financial Account Reporting, that's the key form. Um, it's FinCEN Form 114. FinCEN refers to Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, but it's not typically a criminal issue. Taxpayers who have foreign bank and financial accounts that exceed uh, the threshold, which is typically more than $10,000 in annual aggregate total, any given day of the year, it doesn't have to be one account. It's, for example, if someone has, let's say, $100,000 in one account and then 10 accounts with 100 bucks in each, they have to report all of them because the total value exceeds uh, $10,000. FBAR refers to many different types of reporting, uh, bank accounts, investment accounts, other types of financial accounts, fixed deposits, term deposits, foreign pensions, superannuations, and SIPs, and CPFs, and MPFs, and EPFs, foreign life insurance policies that have a surrender value or cash value. So what happens if a taxpayer doesn't file it, files it late through quiet disclosure, and, uh, and they get caught? Well, how hard is it for the IRS, U.S. government, to prove willfulness? Let's go through it. So the first thing to keep in mind is when we're talking about willfulness, we're talking about civil willfulness. If the IRS uh, wants to refer the matter out for criminal enforcement, then it's like any other criminal case and the government has to show beyond a reasonable doubt and, uh, and all that kind of jazz. That's not what we're talking about here. We're just focusing on civil violations. So there's no uh, confinement, right? Uh, there's no incarceration or anything like that. We're just talking about money. It can be a lot of money, but still you don't have to worry about going to jail. Recently, uh, the government updated the regulations. And so there was some concern as to whether what the total penalty could be. Total penalty for willfulness can be $100,000. That adjusts for inflation. I think it's like 133000 now. Or 50%, whatever is higher. So the baseline is at $100,000 is the lowest penalty you can get. There is discretion to mitigate it, but it's a little different than the discretion for mitigation under non-willfulness. And quite frankly, from a practice perspective, even if the agent is sympathetic and oftentimes they are, they have to get the approval of the manager and the supervisor and they tend to be less sympathetic, right? Um, the, the reason why this is so important is because uh, what well, one, it's kind of near tax season and, uh, and people get concerned, especially if they're filing, if they have to file for prior years. And two, there's been a significant increase in enforcement and compliance. So here's a few things to keep in mind. First of all, you can't change the facts. So if you think you're non-willful, then that's the position you should take. IRS may not agree, but you wouldn't dive in and, and assume you're willful uh, if you believe that you're non-willful. So that's very that's something to keep in mind no matter what you're doing. You know, everyone's got 20-20 hindsight when you're looking back, right? Or, you know, the absurd fear-mongering you'll find online. Um, okay, so one, in order to prove willfulness, there's no showing of intent. They don't have to show that a person knowingly sat there, saw, saw their accounts, saw the F bar, and just said, forget it, I'm not doing it. Um, there are lesser standards that the government can show in order to prove it. One would be reckless disregard. The other one would be willful blindness. Reckless disregard is just basically the person didn't take the additional time they could have in order to learn the information. Uh, Willful blindness is more like they have access to the information. Maybe a buddy emails them over information about FBAR, tells them they should review it because they think that they may have to file it and they just, they, they go, nah, I'm not going to open it, forget it. Uh, I, I don't want to know. That's an example of willful blindness. And in order to meet the standard, th there doesn't have to be um, beyond a reasonable doubt like criminal. There doesn't have to be even be clear and convincing evidence. Back in the day, there was a memo that circulated, which basically the IRS even thought <laughs> that it should be clear and convincing, which is the same standard used for civil fraud, which if, if beyond a reasonable doubt, it's like 95%, uh, clear and convincing evidence would be 75%, but instead it's just preponderance of the evidence, which is 51%. Those aren't real numbers, but that's generally the thought process of what it is in terms of um, if you had to quantify it. If you're out of compliance, there are various programs you can use to get into compliance, assuming the IRS hasn't reached out yet. 
for people who are non willful well, let's start with willful, right? Because that's, that's today's topic. If you're willful, really the only program you can do if you're going to do one of the programs is VDP, the Voluntary Disclosure Program. It's for people who are willful or can't certify under penalty of perjury that they're non willful. So there's still an opportunity to safely get into compliance if you're willful. Uh, we've never had anyone to date uh, prosecuted or anything like that. You're not agreeing that you're criminal, you're just acknowledging that you're willful and that you may have a concern that that willfulness could lead to criminal down the line. It rarely does. Um, you pay typically pay a 50% penalty. You could try to negotiate, but most of the time you go in with the idea that you're paying 50%. Uh, there's various other programs if you're non-willful and you shouldn't dive into the deep end and assume you're willful. If you don't think you are, you should speak with various board certified attorneys who specialize in this area and get a lay of the land. For non-willfulness, there's various other programs. You see streamlined filing compliance procedures everywhere. Streamlined domestic is for people who live in the U.S. Streamlined foreign is for people who do not qualify as U.S. Uh, residents. You would prefer streamlined foreign if you could because you could file original returns and there is no penalty. There's also alternatives depending on whether you have unreported income, what your risk tolerance level is, like uh, reasonable cause and delinquency procedures you would want to avoid a quiet disclosure where you just kind of mass file prior years or start filing in the current year, not going through one of the amnesty programs, because if you get caught doing that, the IRS said that they're gonna drop the hammer on you. Um, we have a ton of uh, free information available on our main website and our sub websites. You can always reach out and schedule a reduced fee initial consultation if you think it's appropriate, and it's something that we handle here. Again, my name is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.